Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Leadership, gaming, performance. That's what Intel are claiming that Nova Lake will be capable of, also known as the Ultra 300 series of desktop processors. Now, there have been a lot of leaks concerning what we will see in Nova Lake, of course, including some specifications, but now some tangible performance targets have also appeared online. I want to talk to you guys about them because I've also managed to wrangle some of my own insights. And not only that, we're going to be discussing the RTX 50 series of super graphics cards yet once again previously the rtx 5080 super specs had leaked online but now we have the 5070 ti super which is a bit of a mouthful and also the 50 uh, 70 uh, super so yeah there's a lot of stuff to get through here and we're going to get right into it after this quick message from the sponsor of the video if you're running a copy of Windows 10, which is not activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I'll also mention right off the bat that this is also an article. Yup, that's right, the website is back online. In fact, there's two articles, one for the RTX 50 Super Series, which you can find, of course, linked in the video description, and also for the Intel CPU as well. Now, do note that the website is still undergoing a few bugs here or there, but it will be resolved over the next couple of weeks feedback of course is also welcome but it's going to be also used extensively for things like build projects and reviews and so on in the future but those are topics that i'll probably talk about with you guys in an update not too long from now with that said let's take a look at this slide shall we ultimate performance and efficiency leadership gaming performance 1.1 higher single thread and 1.6 x multi-thread performance and a new low power island now I just want to say right off the bat, I'm not going to mention who leaked this. It was someone on Twitter, but basically they quickly deleted the tweet. And I so I am assuming they either maybe had second thoughts or what have you. With that said, a couple of people actually sent me DMs about this on both Twitter and also a couple of WhatsApp messages as well. So thanks to everyone who let me know about this. And I also wanted to reach out to my own sources. But first of all, let's do just a little bit of investigation for this initial leak. So it mentions the new low power island. Most likely this is in reference, of course, to the fact that we're going to see four low power cores on this processors we have 16 high performance cores and finally uh, the remainder of course is going to be bought up with the energy efficient cores now just for your fyi that would be the two tile compute unit uh, variant which of course has been floating around right now if you need a kind of a visual comparison of what this would look like it would be a little bit like let's say the 9950x 3d well of course with high-end Zen processors for the desktop, AMD basically split things across two CCDs. The exact packaging and implementation does differ just a little bit with uh, Nova Lake, but just to give you a rough understanding of where Intel are going, you can basically think of that. Not only that, but with also allegedly 144 megabytes of BLLC as well, which is basically a last level cache. Um, that's assuming, of course, all of this gets released. Now, note the 1.1 higher single thread and 1.6 multi thread performance. Um, that is really impressive. But obviously, when you're talking about so many cores, it would make sense. Now, I'm assuming this is versus Arrow Link. So 1.1 times higher single thread performance. This could be achieved from a couple of different ways because note this is not IPC. It could be things like higher 
instructions per clock it could be improvements in just the overall efficiency of the processor i.e things like you know the interconnects and stuff like that but that would probably mostly affect the multi-thread performance lower latencies better branch prediction yada 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 but because we're not 100 percent certain on clock frequencies yet it's very difficult to make a 100 percent certainty 1.6 x multi-thread now interestingly a source actually reached out to me, I actually had a couple of sources, but one told me that they've seen slides and it's actually over 1.6. They told me it was actually over 1.8, but there was a caveat in the slide that they saw. In the slide that they saw, it said at the same power. And again, I assume based on the wording, it was against Arrow Lake. Now, of course, when it comes to those caveats, it's going to be very interesting to see whether it's true or not, and exactly whether Intel manages to achieve this, not least of which because they are also claiming that this is leadership gaming performance. And that, man, that that's exciting. Now, I have to admit, I if... If I had to, if I had to make a prediction, and note that this is not a leak, this is a prediction. I'd say that Intel probably have the advantage in multi-thread performance over Zen 6, simply because they have so many cores. Obviously, with the Ryzen, what is it going to be called, guys? Ryzen 10,000 series. Either way, with Medusa Zen 6, whatever you want to say. The rumor is that uh, AMD raised the um, core count per CCD up to 12 cores. So that's of course 24 cores total, 48 threads. But while Intel doesn't have uh, SMT with its performance cores, ultimately speaking, there is an awful lot of compute here because the energy efficient cores in Intel's uh, Nova Lake are no slouch. So I could certainly imagine multi-thread performance going Intel's way but of course, at the end of the day, who knows? But as for single thread performance, that's going to be very interesting because they are claiming leadership gaming performance. Now, it's very possible that Intel are predicting the, the performance of Zen 6 and they think they may be able to win. It's also possible that Intel technically come to the market first and therefore, like, ha ha, we're beating Zen 5. Now, honestly, I would be very interested to see what happens. Like I just said a moment ago, the thing is there are so many there are so many there are so many moving parts to this because it's not just like final clock frequencies which haven't been, you know, decided 100 percent I mentioned uh, earlier this year, I think it was like, I don't know, maybe March or something like that, that uh, I'd been hearing that inter uh, AMD, excuse me, were internally targeting around 60 gigahertz for um low multi-thread workloads. So like one, two, three, four threads, something like that there projecting maybe around six gigahertz but of course we're going to have to wait and see but outside of all of those things and again improvements to the arch architecture itself it's things like just the interconnects and bandwidth across the chips and latencies there are so many moving parts to this i'm going to be very interested but i have to admit i'm actually quite excited for what intel actually bring to the table here the only negative is that, unfortunately, this is going to be, once again, an entirely new socket. Uh, the socket is rumored to be L, um, LGA 1954. And I, I think one of the strongest points with AMD, honestly, is the fact that you have that, like, what's the word, certainty? Of, like, oh, hey, I'm buying AM4, I'm buying AM5, and you know that yeah your motherboard it might miss a few features to the latest and greatest ones like if you bought like the first generation am4 boards you're certainly going to have some benefits if you move to later am4 boards but ultimately speaking you know it works in most cases so yeah um hopefully we've moved like it lasts more than five minutes with the uh, 1954 platform and Let's move on swiftly to the RTX 50 series of graphics cards because Copperdite 7 Kimmy has leaked a couple of new SKUs. Now, previously he had, of course, leaked the RTX 5080 Super, which basically is the RTX 5080 in terms of the SM and all of the other bits and pieces which go with it. However, the difference is the bus width, while it's only 256 bit, they're cramming in three gigabyte modules. So of course this means 24 gigabytes of VRAM total. That's obviously a really good thing in terms of just the overall capacity of the GPU, 24 gigs, I think is actually pretty nice for this. I would have loved to a slightly wider bus, but hey, whatever, right? 
Now Coppertite is leaking the 5070 Super. Uh, it's got 6400 FP32, so that's 50 um, uh, SM. So that basically means that we're looking at an increase of 2 SM over the RTX 5070 vanilla. The primary difference here, though, of course, is the uh, well, memory configuration. So we're looking at 192 bit GDDR7, but 18 gigabytes of memory uh, total, which of course is because once again they're using that high capacity RAM. As for the 5070 Ti Super, 8960 FP32, so that's the same number of CUDA cores that we find in the 5070 Ti non Super. Again, the primary difference is the fact that the memory configuration is going to be 24 gigabytes of RAM because while it's still a 256 bit bus, you guessed it, say it with me, they're using three gigabyte modules. You'll also notice that some of the power figures are also raising as well in terms of TDP. If I had to guess, some of this could be explained potentially with the higher um, uh, capacity uh, RAM, but most likely, it's possible that, AM, that um, AMD, that NVIDIA are going to be uh, running the GPUs at a slight higher clock frequencies. How much of a difference this really makes, I'm not too much, um, I'm not too certain. Uh, I'll also be very interested because a source of mine, and they've had a reasonable track record, it's not spotless. I'm putting it in here just for the sake of completeness. Take it with a huge pinch of salt. I don't really have a huge amount of uh, faith with prices this far out as an FYI, but I was told the following. The 5080 Super uh, is going to be 1149 US dollars for early targeting, 850 US dollars for the 5070 Ti Super. The 5070 Super is going to be 599. The 5060 Super, which I don't think has had specs leaked for it yet, uh, 349 US dollars and the 5030. I really don't know if that's a typo or whether that's just a mistake because we've not even had the 5040 release yet. So I don't know, but that's allegedly 16 SM with six gigabytes of memory and 179 US dollars. I have to say, if that's true at 100, and, what was it, 180 bucks? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be spicy. What's the 5050? I think uh, I think MSRP for the 5050 is uh, 250, right? That's a lot of money. I'll be very interested to see how well that does. With that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.